Travel consideration provided by. Entresto is the number one heart failure brand prescribed by cardiologists and has helped over one million people. It was proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or aliskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. Make sure you join us Monday for our new interview with Ben Affleck. Oh, nice. Can't wait to see him. Yeah, indeed. Plus, our exclusive with Shannon Doherty talking all about her new project with Bruce Willis and the news that caught her by surprise. Nice. Oh. Happening now. It's a fear that no parent wants to experience, having to report their child missing and not knowing the outcome. We speak with a local psychiatrist who offers tips on how to better manage your mental health should you be put in that predicament. And get ready for a strong cold front to change everything for the weekend. I'll tell you how cold it's going to get, how gusty it's going to be, while repelling down the side of the Thompson Hotel downtown. We'll tell you why in just a bit. And holiday gift baskets are fun to give and receive. Coming up next, though, we compare what arrives at the door as opposed to what you see in catalogs or online. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five now safe and sound the search for a 15 year old boy now over San Antonio police are telling us that Elijah Hernandez Casares is now safe. Missing children the Bear County Sheriff's Office says this is a situation that's all too common at this time of the year and the outcomes are always different. Yeah yesterday we told you about 18 year old Anthony Lunas his remains were found more than three months after he was reported missing so his family is getting some closure but what about the families that are still waiting for answers. Our Jaffney Gray explains how parents of missing children can manage their mental health. When a child is missing, waiting for an outcome can take a toll on the parent's mental health. We get more frightened, afraid, depressed. Psychiatrist Dr. Harry Croft says no matter how long the timeline may be, it is important to share your feelings. Family or friends or church or finding an organization. It is also important to take care of yourself. What most people will tend to do is withdraw. They don't eat right. They don't sleep right. There's a tendency to numb the pain through drinking too much, taking drugs. At times, loved ones tend to take matters into their own hands while awaiting the return of their child. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says always call law enforcement first and maintain communication. There's a myth out there that says, well, we have to wait 24 hours before we report the missing. That does not, that's not true. And that's with any age. Salazar says one of the reactions a panicked parent may have is to create their own missing persons flyer with their own personal information on it. However, he says, should you go that route, he encourages you to put down the non-emergency number of a law enforcement agency or put down 911. This to protect against scammers who may capitalize on your grief. The last thing we want is a distraught mother or father getting that call at 2 in the morning saying we have your loved one and then being scammed out of money or possibly putting themselves at risk. No matter the outcome of an investigation, Dr. Croft says it is important to seek counseling and for family members to remain supportive. Jaffney Gray, case at 12. News. Now, the decision has been made. The Supreme Court of the United States ruling to allow Texas's abortion law to remain in effect. But there is a difference here because abortion clinics can challenge that law in federal court. The law bans abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected. That's around six weeks of pregnancy, often before a woman would know that they're pregnant. It also allows for private citizens to sue anyone who assists in an abortion procedure. About half the states in the United States would ban abortion if Roe were overturned. I'm amazed that we're still fighting for this, but we can't give up. Now today's ruling was an eight to one vote. One man in jail, another in the hospital after a confrontation led to a shooting. Police say a 46 year old man shot around 930 last night. They say the man had been arguing with two other men on Fredericksburg Road near Zarzamora. During that argument, one of the men identified as 51 year old Carlos Escobedo shot the victim and then took off. Escobedo was later arrested. The wounded man remains in critical condition. The second man still on the run.
An update now on a deadly shooting from late last month. A man who was killed the night of Thanksgiving has been identified as 39 year old Jeremy Ketchum. Police say that he was at a gathering in the 6000 block of Bear Branch Road on November 25th when those shots were fired. Officers found three people with gunshot wounds, including Ketchum, who was shot in the head. But the investigation continues because police haven't arrested anyone, nor do they have a motive. It is day three of testimony in the trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. She's accused in the shooting death of Dante Wright. Today, prosecutors called more witnesses to the stand in an effort to convince jurors that Potter's actions were criminal and reckless. Potter shot Wright during a traffic stop in April. She claimed she mistook her gun for her taser. Today, the state showed the jury video of the moments that happened after the shooting. You can see Wright's crash his car shortly after he had been shot. I grabbed the wrong gun! I shot him! Oh my God! I got one male not breathing, one female with facial lacerations. Get out of the car so we can help him! Potter pleading not guilty to two counts of manslaughter, a judge already denying a request from the defense for a mistrial. You know, we're not seeing this in San Antonio, but across the country, more people are being hospitalized with COVID. And the regions where this is happening are now asking for help, like Wisconsin. It's asking FEMA for help. And in New York, people are required now to mask up at indoor public spaces that don't require them to prove that they've been vaccinated. The other thing is that kids now accounting for 22% of all new cases, and some parents are still worried about vaccinating them. There's a lot of concerns that people have because, you know, they're listening to to Facebook and they're listening to other postings that are, are mis spreading misinformation. Now, Dr. Del Rio says that instead of turning to social media, parents should instead discuss their plans with their pediatrician. By the way, kids are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine once they're five years old. And if your child is at least 16 years old, he or she can get the Pfizer COVID booster. They are checking out. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at stories that we are working on for six o'clock today. Nearly 100 Texas A&M San Antonio students have been living in hotel rooms this semester because there's a shortage of dorms on campus and tomorrow they have to pack up their things and leave. Our Alicia Barrera is talking to students about what it's been like living in a hotel, being shuttled to and from campus, and she's finding out how Tam Yusei is making changes to allow more students into campus storms. Plus, Ursula, you've had a big day. She was the first in San Antonio to try this. Take a look. Wow, there's no blurriness up close. None. Copyright daily vision improvement, <laughs> INC. I couldn't read that 15 minutes ago. We're working on a story about eye drops that temporarily cure nearsightedness. A clinic in San Antonio was the first to test these eye drops, now the first to offer them to patients. And today, Ursula, you were the first patient in SA to try them. Looking forward to that story coming up at 6 o'clock. Ooh, looking forward to that. It All was right. very exciting. All right, good stuff. Okay, so, you know, it was also an exciting day for our friend, Adam Kasky. We're about to get into some colder weather this weekend, but he's excited about more than just that. Yes, he is taking part in this year's Over the Edge charity event. It's benefiting the Epilepsy Foundation of Central and South Texas. This is happening at the Thompson Hotel, where Adam is all rigged up to get going. Ugh, you're making me nervous. Uh, you think you're nervous? <laughs> we are all rigged up, ready to go. Over 20 stories up on the top of the new beautiful Thompson Hotel. This is all for a good and actually great cause over the edge. Epilepsy Foundation of South and Central Texas. And yeah, take a look down. I was telling myself all day today, just don't look down, don't look down. First thing I did, looked down, of course. So that's the view down, and I'm going to come back, bring you your forecast, talk about how much this weather is going to change. Beautiful view from up here. Nice cirrus clouds rolling in. Should give us a colorful sunset. But big changes starting tomorrow. This weekend's going to be completely different. We'll tell you about the cold front, and let's see how this goes in just a few minutes. Oh, Adam, we're praying for you. All right, buddy. Oh, jeez. All right, we'll see you then. My heart. I know, I be know. Still. Okay.
You know, even with all the advancements, researchers are still trying to figure out why black women die from breast cancer at a higher rate than white women. And the question is why? It's one of the topics that we discuss with a local oncologist who's attending the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. Dr. Sharon Wilkes spoke with us about a recent study that researchers discussed at today's event. Listen. One that's uh, more common amongst African Americans is called triple negative breast cancer. And it's interesting that that is the more common uh, type is actually borne out by some of the re uh, reported studies this morning um, that proportionally that that's a larger concentration. And then that's been the one type of breast cancer that universally has been more commonly associated with genetic mutation alterations. When we think of BRCA1 and BRCA2, we know that these mutations that when they occur, individuals are more prone to the development of cancer, they're less protected. Yeah, so you're going to hear more from Dr. Wilson, what she's telling all of us to do to stay healthy. That gives you a tease uh, right there. Exactly. That's tonight at six. And by the way, the Breast Cancer Symposium ends tonight. New at five, gift baskets. Don't they look pretty and so yummy online and in the catalogs? But what do you think you're really giving and what your recipient really gets? 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris with a look at five different companies and what showed up at the door. Gift baskets, easy to give and nice to receive. But will the goodies you order really be what your loved one gets? Consumer Reports ordered 25 baskets priced at about $100 each. They came from five companies, Gourmet Gift Baskets, Harry and David, Knack, Mouth, and Olive and Coco. We found a wide variety of foods, such as specialty pasta, premium sauces, chocolate delights, and high-end breakfast goodies. Mouth and Knack let you create a custom basket. Knack and Gourmet Gift Baskets cater not just to food choice. The gift message itself mentioned that all of the items are made by women-owned businesses. And to me, that just makes it extra special. Did the packaging feel gifty? Olive and Coco's goodies come in a wooden box. Harry and David sent one order in this small trunk. Really kind of cool, certainly reusable. Mouth wrapped their treats on a cheese board. So what if something goes wrong? As you can see, the pears, there were nine of them, came in damaged. Harry and David was having a bad pear day. Three or four baskets arrived with bruised pears. When contacted, Harry and David promptly sent replacements. In the end, senders and receivers liked mouth, citing the ability to create your own gift. Packaging is more natural than snazzy. Knack was favored for high quality offerings at a range of prices, but some grumbled at the packaging costing 10 bucks. So is what you see what you get? None of the baskets exactly match their online image, but they were pretty close and there were few substitutions. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12. Twelve news. All right, now we know. Uh, I love that bad pear day. Uh, <laughs> Adam Kasky is not having a bad hair day. He is wearing a helmet. He's about to rappel down the Thompson Hotel for a good cause. We're just a couple of minutes away from this big moment. Okay, you're going to see that and his forecast, my friends, right after the break. Please try to control your anxiety. He'll be back. <laughs> This Essay Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Pam Hospitals. Hi, my name is Gerald Scott, Army veteran. For all of you who are not spending Christmas with your family, I need for you to do one thing. Find a mirror, reflection, and look at yourself and say thank you. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your services. Thanks. Check this out, a live look with Sky 12 flying over the Thompson Hotel today. We told you earlier in the show, yeah, that's where Adam Kasky's hanging out, literally. Yeah, li literally hanging out. He's the guy right there in blue. He's getting ready to repel his way down to the bottom, but it's for a really good cause. Oh, Adam, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly know how to get our attention. <laughs> you know, I think Ursula is more nervous than I am right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I hope should have heard her during the break. Check this, double check that. They're all wearing helmets, right? I go through the whole mom checklist. I love it. Thank you for caring so much. I appreciate it. But yes, we're on top of the new and beautiful Thompson Hotel here, right along St. Mary Street. And it's a little nerve wracking to uh, peek downward, of course. 
But we're up here for Over the Edge, which is to support the Epilepsy Foundation of Central and South Texas. You can come up and do this yourself even tomorrow. The weather's going to be very different, so we're going to get into that first, the worst part. Alexi is my man here. He's gone over everything with me. And for, we're going to do the lean before we do the forecast because, oh, this is the worst part. Okay, you got it. Yep. Now that's supposed to be pointed up or down? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Hey, even better. All right. <clears throat> Literally over the edge. Let's get to the forecast. There's no try, there's only do. All right, let's talk temperatures. 83 was our high temperature today, and now we're at 81 degrees. We were two degrees shy of the record high for the day, but get ready, everything changes big time as we get into tomorrow. Uh, cold front's gonna hit tonight, and you'll feel the effects first thing tomorrow morning. And you see that colder air to the north of us? We're talking 30s up the plains. That's headed our way, and we'll actually have readings in the 30s by Sunday morning. Okay, that's gonna be our low point temperature wise. It's gonna be brief though, a brief little chill that we have and the coldest air we've seen yet this season. Let's talk winds though, of course, for the repellers tomorrow. And they've done this in these conditions before, Alexi, this is nothing. They've done it in high winds and whatnot. It's all doable. Tomorrow it's gonna be gusty, not just cooler, but of course, winds gusting up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour. But here's the key for us. We are on the leeward side of the building, not the windward side. So the wind is blowing into the opposite side of the building and it's gonna give us a nice little calmer section on this side. All right, take a look at the detailed forecast. Temperatures in the 60s overnight. Tomorrow morning, we'll briefly drop down into the 50s and stay there for several hours before we get up near 60 degrees by the afternoon with that gusty wind. And you look at uh, Sunday, of course, the morning stands out, 35 degrees to start the day. That means our first freeze likely in some outlying areas, uh, maybe even downtown. I mean, it's not out of the question that we see our first freeze even uh, at the airport. It's a possibility at this time, not necessarily a probability. Sunday afternoon, back into the low 60s with a lot of sunshine. And let's actually talk about uh, next week because we'll have big changes. We're gonna warm up quickly, be well into the 70s, especially by Tuesday, but the humidity, it's gonna be back then as well. It'll be muggy and sticky next week. So this fall-like feel is only gonna last for two days. Speaking of, uh, hey, all right, we got a peanut gallery at the uh, rooftop bar down here, cheering us on. All right, so Lexi, I, I push this, I pull it up. Yep. Okay, do that. Yep. So now we're still in park. Yep. All right, and then I gently pull it back. A bit. Pull it back. Woo! <laughs> yep. Bring it up to oh, I went too far. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> I was He's going too us. fast, right? <laughs> you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith in your equipment. You gotta have faith in general. So just walk down. Yep, and then hit that uh, pile on there. Yep. Woo! Oh, the view. <laughs> you couldn't pick a better day to do this, Adam. Hey, 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 everybody. I know, this really is the perfect day to do it. And I love it that you have an audience on a rooftop. <laughs> oh, yeah, they've got this rooftop bar here. Everybody's out on the balcony. All right. You all are doing this he's tomorrow, still talking right? talking to us while he's doing yeah. this, I mean. Yeah, concentrate on what you're doing there, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> we're just walking down the building, we're not bouncing. Walking down, walking down. And ha hats off to the guy next to you. They just gave me a little reminder over you. the radio. We're walking. Yeah, that is Canyon next to me. They call her Canyon. I wonder how she got that name, huh? <laughs> she, she looked over at me, she's like, hey, you want to race? And uh, uh, someone named Canyon, someone they call Canyon? Absolutely not. <laughs> you think she might have a little more well, experience a, than you? You, know, I, uh, you think? So what, what's good about this is, you know, part of it is to just kind of overcome your fears. I do not like heights. I'm not saying I hate them, but you, you just force yourself to do it and you gain a lot of confidence. You know, you realize what you're capable of and really, it's more fun than scary, to be honest with you. The worst part is that initial lean over the edge. Hoo, 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 hoo. And you did that for that like three minutes. That is just, you know, when you gotta have faith. Yeah, you, well, it's actually, I prefer to do that and kind of get that out of the way and have faith in my equipment. And then once you have the faith, you keep your legs straight. You don't want to bend your knees much. I was taught that my buddy Sonny used to uh, teach rappelling for the Marine Corps and he was giving me a few tips. Keep your, your inclination is going to be to bend your knees, but keep them out straight. 
and All that's right. actually helping. All right, Adam. But boy, this is quite the distance. You're showing great form there, and uh, we're, we're feeling a little bit calmer. For those of you just joining us, this is our meteorologist, Adam Kasky, rappelling down the side of a building while doing a weathercast live. Yeah, there's got to be some Guinness uh, yeah, world record for I that. Yeah, I think so. All right, buddy. Thank you, Adam. Uh, we'll keep an eye on Adam. We're just going to leave him there like that? <laughs> I thought we were going to let him get down hanging. to the bottom. <laughs> I know. I so Lonnie Walker getting some help. Yeah, Manu with the assist, and he's not even playing anymore. When we come back, we'll tell you about the contribution that Ginobili is making to this young Spurs team and Dak's early Christmas gift for his teammates coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs took advantage of the Denver Nuggets struggles with players in health and safety protocols injured and in the sixth game of a seven-game road trip coming off an overtime victory the night before in New Orleans. As a result, the Spurs led wire to wire to snap out of their two-game losing streak. It helped that they hit the boards hard as Jakob Pertl tracks down the offensive rebound, gets it out to Doug McDermott for the three. Then how about the catch-and-shoot three from Bryn Forbes? And the Spurs are burying the long ball in the first quarter, 50%, and led by eight after one. In the second quarter now, DeJounte Murray and Lonnie Walker the fourth are part of an 18-5 run to get the lead out to as much is 18 points, but Nikola Jokic would cut that lead to four. Spurs by nine at the break. Devin Vassell is back from his right quad injury, celebrates with a three to go along with DeJounte's triple. Two of the Spurs, 15 three-pointers on the night. Derek White would once again lead the Spurs at 23, going hard at Jokic for the basket as the Spurs beat the Nuggets in game one of their two-game series, 123 to 111. Lonnie Walker IV had one of the best scoring games, 21 points in 26 minutes, and credits Manu Ginobili with helping him develop. I have a tendency of some, some games, you know, I'm not aggressive going downhill. I just want to be a jump shooter, and um, that's just not all my game. Um, that's something that me and Manu really been talking about, just being aggressive, being confident, um, and just playing the game. You know, he's really been helping me out through, through this time. You know, I obviously haven't been playing the best of my capability, but um, to have someone like that in your circle who's continued to instill confidence and, and push you and, and let you know that you have what it takes to to be somebody in this league, um, you know, it means a lot to me. All right, game two is tomorrow at 7.30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Tis a season, the giving season, and Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott lived up to that as he gifted his teammates a pair of Air Jordans 11's retro cool grays, telling us his teammates are sneakerheads, and he knew they would love them. Terrence Steele out of Steele High School is one of those who took to social media to show off his early Christmas present. The Cowboys quarterback was also asked about his head coach Mike McCarthy proclamation, we're going to win this game in reference to their NFC East rivalry against Washington this weekend. I agree. No, it doesn't put us in a bad spot. I mean, obviously, if you're uh, preparing for this game, you're a Dallas Cowboy. If you're a fan, you expect to you expect to go in and win each and every game. So I don't think he's said anything different than everyone in this building's thoughts. Um, he just voiced it. So now we've got to make sure that um, we're accountable of our words. And I think that's all that is, is a coach setting the tone for the week. And uh, as you said, first day back, making sure that everybody understands where his mind is and where this team's mindset is. We'll check in on Adam after this. Welcome back. We're getting another look right now at our dear friend, Adam Kasky, who's, let's face it, our hero today. He's yes. just uh, rappelling down the side of the Thompson Hotel, still going strong. He's about ready to reach the ground soon, and we're just very excited to finally talk to him. Yeah, there's our ground shot. Right. Yes, yay, ah, ah. go well. Woo. Done. Excellent. Back on the ground. How you Thank feeling, you. Adam? That was you fun. Feeling? Hey, it was great. Not necessarily a sport I'm going to really take okay, up. I'm after reading this, his lips. But it was I do great suggest you do this. Kaysad, I'm very proud of him. Thanks for joining us. How you can get